Hi, and welcome to Visual Art Photography Tutorials. I'm Ray Scott. Today on Short Exposure, we're going to be taking a look at the positives of negative space. So put in its simplest form, negative space is empty space. And it's not a negative thing, actually. It's not bad at all, at least not in those terms. Negative space can be used in photography to highlight a subject. Now, there are different degrees and different amounts of negative space in each image. What we're going to talk about today and what we're going to concentrate on is using negative space to enhance a subject, to draw the eye to a subject. And to do that, we're going to be using large amounts of negative space. Now, just to backtrack for a moment, for artists, for people who use, let's say, pencils to draw, or painters, they start off with a whole canvas that is negative space. There's nothing on it. It's all negative space. And it's up to them to decide, as artists, as painters, how much negative space they want on their canvas. Now, for photographers, it can be quite different. For photographers who work in a studio, they can control the environment. They can put a background and then they can add into that background how much they want or how much they don't want. But for landscape or urban photographers, it's a completely different story. Now, if you're in the landscape, as an example, the canvas is anything but blank. And it's up to you as the photographer to use your imagination and to use your eye to find out how much subject and how much negative space is in the image. You may have to move around a lot. You may have to use different angles to get the effect you want. It may actually be impossible to get the effect you want. But if you're using large amounts of negative space in the landscape, it can really be an effective tool to draw attention to your subject. Let's take a look at how to do it. Okay, so we're going to use six images as examples today, and I've paired them up, so you have three pairs, and the reason why I've done that is because um, basically three different ways uh, and three different effects of negative space. But before we get started on that, I just wanted to remind you that if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, uh, please do so. Uh, you'll be joining a growing group of photographers, and it'll enable you to uh, get your notifications for newly uploaded videos very, very quickly. Okay? So look forward to having you aboard with uh, a subscription there. Okay. Let's take a look at the first image here. This image originally shot in color was changed to black and white so that I could isolate this gentleman in the red chair. And the reason why I wanted to do that was because on his own, in color, he kind of blended with everything else. There was a lot of, you know, blue sky. There's lots of clouds here. Even the water has a lot of texture. It's negative space, to be sure, but hard to distinguish, really, from everything else. So I wanted to uh, make him stand out, and that's why I did it that way. It's negative space, but it's not the way I really like to use it. In the second image of these bulrushes standing in the snow, lots of negative space uh, up here and over here, but because of shadows from trees that are outside of this image, the shadows kind of add um, a little bit more than I want. So it's negative space, but not the way I really like to do it. The next image was shot in studio, so I had total control of what I wanted it to do and how I wanted it to be. So you have tons of negative space here and over here and over here because I used a black background and the flower stands out on its own. Same thing here, black background, you have a leaf, and then you have this water droplet that is really, really, it's just in the middle of all of this negative space, you know, and your eye goes to that, back up to the leaf, back to that, and there's no distraction because it's just solid black and back. Now the final two images I'm going to show you, classic examples of negative space, the way I really like to use it in the landscape, um, it's not always easy to find it and you have to move around as I did in this one because in this one 
Uh, there were lots of other hay bales around, um, tons of them actually, right over the rise, right over this, it's a bit of a hill, and in back of that, lots of hay bales. But I walked around, I got lower, shot up towards the sky, and I got this image. And you know something, your eye cannot help but go to that. I mean, it, there's just nothing else in the image. The sky, there's not a cloud in the sky, totally negative space. This is just simple grass, negative space. Your eye keeps on going back to that hay bale. And that's a, a great way to use negative space to highlight a subject. Same thing here. Okay. Now, originally, this is what I was shooting, an image like this. And for whatever reason, human beings tend to like to see things in odd numbers, like one, three, five, seven, that sort of thing. So when I came upon this thing at this swamp, two logs, I knew that it would be okay, but I need a third element. And there was this duck that was traveling around. And sure enough, he went and back and formed a perfect triangle. So, you know, plus you have your, your odd number. So it really, really worked out well. Um, I thought originally I would make everything very, very white, and you'd still know it was water because there's a duck floating on it, but I thought, you know something, I'm going to leave a little bit of texture just so that you get a little bit more of a hint that it's water. Uh, but again, rule of thirds applies here. These three subjects, objects are right there in the rule of thirds. Uh, there's tons of negative space. Um, your eye can't help but go to this. I mean, there's just really nothing else to look at. Your eye goes right back to there. Um, and these are ways, there are many more ways, but these are some of the ways that you can use negative space to make your photography even more interesting. So as we've just seen, negative space can be used very effectively to draw attention to a subject in your image, especially when you've placed the subject closer to the edges of the frame. I'm Ray Scott, and until next time, remember, it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.